Good evening, gentlemen and ladies. I am the old school game snob, and today we are taking a look at the Lightning Orb Sorceress. This is actually my personal favorite. She has absolutely no trouble farming Pindle Skin, and this gear is actually really quite budget. This is another budget build guide, of course. Here she is in the World Stone Keep. This is actually another good level 85 farming area that she does quite quite well at a lot of uh, medium weak kind of creatures in here and they're kind of all spread all over the place for the most part and uh, her lightning or chain lightning just reaches everything everywhere you don't even know what it's killing sometimes and that's one of the nice things about this build of course you run into any problems with immunities oh not gloams everything except gloams <laughs> Well, I guess those are technically black soul, but uh, just like just like any other class, she struggles with uh, the black souls. Got it. The lightning resistance I have on this character right now is kind of low, so I don't like to mess with the black souls, especially champions. Are you kidding me? Come on. <laughs> Even though Frozen Orb does do a pretty pretty good job with them, they just kill too fast. Oh my god. Anyway, uh, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at this build, and then I will show you how she does in some of the other farming areas that don't have black souls. Um, here is the skill tree layout. For cold, we have one point into frozen armor. It's a good bang for your buck. One point gives you a nice boost to defense, and of course that freezing aura then we have one 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 point into everything until we get to co uh, frozen orb and then we've maxed out frozen orb at 20 hard points and we've dropped one point into cold mastery in the lightning skill tree this is where we have invested most of our points uh, we have 20 into lightning 20 into chain lightning and 20 into lightning mastery now this effectively gives her with gear a 6700 lightning and a 3700 uh, chain lightning and this is increasing slowly as I level up. I'm putting more points into Charge Bolt since Charge Bolt has a synergy with Lightning and Chain Lightning or is it just yeah, no, Lightning and Chain Lightning. Uh, if I had more points to spend I would put them in Nova but I will run out of points long before that and since this is a hybrid build we can't 100% max out Lightning but that's okay. As you'll see it is enough. I have also option to put one point into Energy Shield. This can sometimes help with survivability a bit although it does drain the mana super duper fast you can decide whether you want that or not uh, the one point in a static field helps take down bosses obviously and one point into warmth just because of the bang for your buck that you get out of that one as for stats it's pretty standard 156 strength uh, a little bit boosted here this is not perfectly optimized i could probably take that down a little bit and use gear but that's okay i'm still in progression of uh, leveling this character up and as for vitality well that's where the rest of her points go Let's take a look at her budget gear. Like I say, this is the very budget version. There are better versions. I'm going to be doing a budget version and a best version uh, guide. The best versions will come later. These are going to be the budget guides to get everybody up and running and slaying and finding magic loot and good stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, the obligatory crystal spirit sword. I've got a Harlequin Crest Shaco. You could also swap this for a Peasant Crown. That would be okay. Although the Crest the Shaco is really nice because of that big life and mana boost. We have the Spirit Shield, of course. Uh, just nice skills and faster cast rate. This is a character that really enjoys faster cast rate. Right now her faster cast rate is 124. And we do need that 117 to hit that faster cast rate breakpoint for Lightning and Chain Lightning. You don't need to have 117. You could also be fine at the 78% breakpoint, I think it's 78%, and still cast fast enough. Uh, right now I'm just enjoying that faster cast rate, but this can kind of be swapped around a little bit and still works. Uh, skin, Serpent Skin of the Vampire Magi, very good for this character class because of that faster cast rate and how affected by faster cast rate Lightning and Chain Lightning are. Um, and for boots, I've actually just got some nice Magic Fine boots here. I've got some Magic Fine, a Magic Fine belt magic find gloves uh here's one thing though she does like to have the faster cast rate on the rings uh right now i've only got like a nice mana ring here and that's just to kind of get her mana up around 700 i find when it's up around 700 that when i use insight on my mercenaries pole axe that she's able to cast basically without any sort of mana issue. If it's lower than that, if it's around 500 mana, I find that she drains that mana even with the insight aura up. So I like to get the mana up around 700 just to balance that out. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, she's a lot of magic find gear. Actually, what I usually do is I usually have the blade of Alibaba over here. And uh, that's uh, 
still perfectly viable. That's what you saw at the beginning of this video with. And she actually has a 310% better chance of getting magic items. So this character is extremely viable with a nice high magic find. Like I say, you can swap around the belt, swap around the rings, swap around the boot. Those things are all, all pretty optional. For her amulet, I've just got this nice faster cast rate amulet to break that uh, 117 point. This could be improved, you know, with a nice caster amulet with plus two skills and, and faster cast on it. And her power level would go up quite a bit with a nice amulet. But uh, this is kind of my budget configuration at the moment. You could, you know, take something like uh, a lightning skills amulet and swap that out and have a slightly slower cast rate and also do quite well. That works pretty well as well. Pretty similar, actually. So there are some options in how you configure her gear and she still works really well. All right, so you already saw the Pindleskin and Eldritch the Rectifier run. Let's head on over to the, the pit. The pit is a good run for this character. She's able to deal with everything in it if you've never made your way to the pit before. Head to the outer cloister, follow the road until the road forks, and one of the roads will lead you to the pit. Uh, in the pit, of course, you have the level 85 monsters, which are capable of dropping anything. Well, the champion packs are and the, uh, and the unique packs are. Um, she encounters, she has no problem dealing with the uh, with the possessed stalkers, with the stalkers rather, and the dark rangers she can take out with frozen orb pretty easily. The little guys, of course, are no problem at all. Um, the one thing that she does kind of occasionally have problems with are the champion and unique uh, ranger packs, the dark ranger packs. They can kind of surprise her and <laughs> add up quite a bit of damage. But uh, for the most part, she does pretty, pretty darn well down here. One of the nice things, though, about the frozen orb and lightning combination is that where the frozen orb uh, and something like blizzard or something like meteor, they all share the same timer and the cooldown, uh, frozen orb and lightning don't share a cooldown. So basically, you can almost cast both spells at the exact same time, and that's kind of what I'm just in the habit of doing by default. It doesn't matter what I see, if it's cold immune or lightning immune, it's basically frozen orb and then lightning, and you can just kind of get your timing down right, and, you know, frozen and lightning are, are kind of simultaneously cast, and that, uh, that, you know, can almost kind of double your damage, right? So if you don't have anything lightning or cold immune, you can almost basically double your damage if you get the timing of that right. So that's uh, that's a pretty nice uh, synergy between these two spells for the orb and uh, lightning sorceress. Let's check out some other areas. Oh, and by the way, I'm doing this with the blade of Alibaba just to show you that she doesn't even need to be at her max power to be very effective. Like I said, she can farm anywhere. Some places she struggles with a little bit, other places she does really well at, but she is viable anywhere. Uh, the main issue that you will encounter is this character's mercenary and uh, getting him enough good gear that he can stand there and take it. Basically, something like the Chaos Sanctuary he can struggle in until you get him a lot of nice uh, life leech and some decent armor and a decent weapon, that sort of, that sort of stuff. Um, I actually have a guide specifically on how to gear your mercenary up. Right now, actually, I've got this mercenary with the Insight Great Pole Axe, and I also just gave him... Uh, Talrasha's Helm, which gives him 10% life leech, and he's doing pretty well. I also actually just added a different item, the Bone Flesh, which also has a 5% life steal. So he's actually up to 15% life steal, and I uh, actually just gave him that uh, a couple hours ago, and, and uh, he's doing actually a lot better now here in the Chaos Sanctuary than he was doing before. I guess I better pick that up, and I better pick that up. Um, yeah, anyway. She, uh, like I say, here we got the Blade of Alibaba. If you wanted to switch back and forth between the two, there's your magic find configuration, there's your damage output configuration. You can take down some of the monsters a little bit quicker and then switch over to your, uh, your magic find option when it's time to take out Diablo. But uh, yeah, pretty good, not too very bad. Another good level 85 area for this character is the World Stone Keep. There's usually a lot of fairly squishy things in here, a lot of corners to hide behind, and because you got that chain lightning, well, unless you have the lightning immunes like I do in this case, but for the most part you can kind of hide behind corners and let your chain lightning do most of the most of the heavy lifting. So here's a good example of some of the things you'll encounter in World Stone Keep that this character does really well at. Ghosts and the, what are they called? The little, uh, what are they, uh, what, soul killers, that's right. Um, so yeah, Chain Lightning just jumps around, takes out everything, and because they have such weak hit points, uh, yeah, it works really, really well at taking out uh, certain types of creatures. Again, World Stone Keep, you kind of get what you get. 
But let's head on down to the throne room and I'll show you how she does against Bale's minions. Of the builds that I've shown so far, I think this one is probably the most viable at taking down Bale's assorted array of minions. The other ones sort of struggle. This one also struggles because, you know, Bale's minions are pretty tough. But this character does a pretty good job and has an answer for most of the problems that come. Sometimes it goes better, sometimes it goes worse. It really depends on what you get when it comes to the affixes that spawn with the uh, various uh, Bale minions. But uh, it's not too bad for the most part. I would say that she probably struggles the most with the council member pack. And this really depends on how well that mercenary holds up. If he can hold up for just a minute or two, it's okay. If not, well, it's going to be teleport around and uh, kite, kite, kite. <laughs> and run back to the uh, to, to Mala for more healing potions. And break them up and just kind of take them down one by one. Uh, it's not too bad. Not too bad. Like I say, it's at least doable with this character as compared to some of the other builds that we've taken a look at. She has a pretty easy time with the Venom Lords. Uh, for some reason, they just go down pretty quick and pretty easy with her combination of lightning and orb. They never really seem to be able to catch up and uh, be very threatening. So she just kind of runs and kites. Well, <laughs> don't teleport into them and it, it helps. But run, kite, lightning bolt, lightning bolt. And yeah, those guys go down pretty, pretty good. And she usually has a pretty okay time also with the minions of destruction. Same strategy as before. Like I say, you double up the damage by basically casting two spells at once that orb and that lightning combination. And yeah, even the minions of destruction are not usually a problem. Sometimes they can spawn with like speed buffs and stuff, which make them a little bit more challenging, but uh, she handles herself, even without her mercenary. She handles herself pretty, pretty, not too very bad. As for Bale himself, I like to get the mercenary back. Then it's uh, of course a quick, quick, quick lightning uh, static field rather. Take him down as much as he can, and then cast, cast, cast. I find if you stay a bit closer, he can actually uh, do... It's easier, because he casts certain spells when you're kind of mid-range compared to when, he's, when you're further away. Uh, it just it just seems to work better. I don't know, that mid-range um, seems to help. The ancient tunnels are pretty much what you would expect. If she can handle the pit, she can definitely handle the ancient tunnels. I would say they're the easier of the two areas. Now, she may not take down monsters quite as quickly as the blizzard sorceress, but she takes them down pretty quickly. And the nice thing about this character is there's really nowhere that she can't go and nowhere that she can't handle. And so you kind of sacrifice some of that damage output and specific farming for a wider variety. As I'm sure you might expect, she has no trouble taking down Mephisto. And as usual, the last place I like to look at is the Moomoo farm. How does she handle the cows? Well, I would say solid medium, medium plus. She takes them down pretty fast, certainly not as fast as a pure blizzard sorceress, but if you can get them lined up just right and fire off that regular lightning instead of that chain lightning, that seems to kind of work better. Chain lightning can be a little bit slow because the hell bovine, even though they don't have resistances, do have a fairly tanky amount of hit points, so they uh, don't go down super duper fast, but solid. She's solid. She's solid everywhere, and that's what I really like about this build is she's just solid everywhere. Hope you have all enjoyed this video. I have more sorceresses guides, sorceresses guides coming out real soon. So uh, subscribe for those and uh, check out some of the other videos on my channel. Many more Diablo guides to be found. All right. Oh, what's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What is that? What is it? Oh, God. Is it four sockets? Oh my god, it's four sockets. Oh, well that's a good lucky find. <laughs> Alright, have a great day everybody.